What if I told you there's a wave that you can ride for over 10 miles? A wave so powerful it has killed hundreds of people and been called one of the seven wonders of the world. A wave so feared that the locals named it the Silver Dragon. What if I told you this wave is in a river? Would you believe me? Once again, Red Bull and Wapsano have teamed up to put on the only surf contest of its kind on the Chiantong River in Hangzhou, China. Four teams of surfers will compete for $25,000 and a chance to surf the largest tidal bore in the world. The teams will be judged on international rules for a combination of radical, controlled maneuvers on critical sections of the wave with speed, power, and flow. The team that combines the best rides will be crowned the winner of the 2013 Red Bull Chiantong Shootout. I didn't know what to think when I was first invited here to Hangzhou in China. Never have, would I thought that I'd be surfing a tidal board. And I was like, whoa, that'd be nuts, a six mile wave. Growing up, you never think you'd be surfing a, a wave in China, let alone a river. When Wapsoto told us that we, we'd have the opportunity to surf the river, I was blown away. And we don't let those opportunities go by. Hangzhou is a very modern city. Um, you've got a mixture of old and new. It's a massive city and it's just buildings going up everywhere. Unbelievably huge amounts of construction going up. There's just skyscrapers everywhere. On one side of the river it's very modern architecture and on the other side it's old and lots of trees and uh, old style buildings. I think it's like a thousand years old so there's obviously a lot of a lot of history to the city as well. The city of Hondro is so beautiful with so much great architecture. It feels like I'm in New York. This you know, big river sort of wraps all the way through the, the middle of Hangzhou. It's so unique. It's it's a it's a tidal wave that that comes down the river. It's been breaking for thousands of years. I guess it's the China Sea just funneling into this narrow river that runs right up this city. And when the tide shifts, that big body of water tries to you know, push its way down the, the narrow river. The funnel effect it creates, all the water kind of suddenly pushes into a, a narrow entrance and it goes from deeper to shallow water quite quickly and all the water rushes back up the river, creating the uh, tidal wave. It's this crazy river wave that runs for miles that you can surf. It's straight up a tsunami. A river. Words are hard to describe exactly uh, how you feel when it, when it arrives. Just seeing it isn't enough. Actually riding the wave is just surreal. Man, when it turns up, it's, it's something special, something that I've never seen before. Like probably one of the most unique waves in the world. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, it, yeah, it's, it's cool. to get back and have another crack at it. And it's a pretty fun little trip down the down the river. It's a pretty unique kind of wave so hopefully the banks have changed a little bit and they offer something a little bit different to last year so just no expectations, just wait and see what happens when it turns up. I'm nervous, definitely. Um, I'm expecting, hopefully, not to get lost off the back of the wave. Uh, yeah, I was here last year as a judge, and um, just seeing where the wave sections break, I think gives me a little bit of an advantage. Hopefully, we have some good teamwork and communication. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> you know, Trent's a good surfer and he knows how to drive a ski, so I think we'll be after to change over really quickly and we get plenty of waves each, so I think it's just, we're just going to go out there and do what we do, and we get through, we get through, if not, we'll have a good time doing it. Pretty, pretty relaxed, more nervous about the colour of the water more than anything. Just trying not to fall off.
back section of the way is obviously the best way, and it's the biggest, and kind of offers the biggest opportunities to do a couple of smacks. And yeah, I was lucky. I think the second of the first wave I got really walled up well, and um, I was able to um, throw a couple of turns and then a couple of kind of hacks off the top, and then um, at the end I was able to set up for a couple of Rio. It was so much fun, exceeded my expectations. I was here last year and I saw it and it just you know blew my mind actually being able to surf it. It's so surreal, like tidal wave in the middle of China. Nose riding is what sets me uh, aside from the other guys, so I was just trying to post up on the nose. I think that it, I got one maybe like a minute or two long, my back leg just gave out. Wow, look at this boat coming at me and there's a tidal wave coming down the river and I was kind of thinking, you know, on, on, on one side I was like, how's this guy going to negotiate this wave? The lift in the tail of the boat, just the propellers were just spinning and the noise, like, I'll never forget. Super fun and super crazy. I mean, the first section definitely was a lot more um, powerful and bigger than I thought, and it definitely crept up close. And looking at the wave, the tidal board kind of coming at you is definitely kind of a crazy um, experience. You're kind of looking and you're like, oh my gosh, like what is this thing? We got up there and we already saw it was coming and um, so much more water in the river today. You could see it was, it was a lot bigger. I think it's supposed to get bigger in the next two days. So it was, it was good. To, I think it was a really good size for the river today. It wasn't too big, it wasn't too small and it was hitting um, a lot of those sections nice. It came earlier than we thought and um, yeah, it had a lot more a lot more front to it today, which was exciting. So super excited to be here and, and um, yeah, great day surfing, great great conditions and yeah, it's pretty chaos after that wave after that wave goes in. Team Life Proof and Ocean and Earth were competing, the boys from Team Ruka and the crew decided to venture off to one of China's martial arts studios to watch surfer and MMA fighter Richie Vasilek being taught by the local masters in ancient culture and martial arts technique. First of all, Mr. Lee will show your, your Chinese martial called Tai Chi, yep. you know, shadow box. Then, then the second step is you show them some MMA. Okay. <laughs> then the third step you exchange. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>
After a day of grappling and making new friends, the two teams were ready to square off in round two. I can't wait to see you pull the tail on one of these legs. <laughs> I'm blow the tail on a normal leg. So uh, Mark and Rich are going to do the same thing at Anastasia and Steve did yesterday. <laughs> Just get heaps of jet ski wake on Makua's waves so he falls off. Uh, hopefully get uh, get a wave out the back. I didn't ride a wave last time so I don't really learn anything. <laughs> yeah, Kyle, I guess the style of wave is, is they said the, is the best, so try and get most of your surfing done up there. I think yeah, where it's the biggest and probably you know offers you the best wave, so just wanna go out there and yeah, it's, I mean just have good fun really. I mean there's four mates and you know surfing a, a wave in a country in a river I've never been to so it's a pretty cool experience. I'm just stoked to be here. Ready, bro. Ready to rock. First off, welcome everybody to the day two of qualifying of the Red Bull Shantung Shootout. The youngest of our surfers is going to pick heads or tails. <laughs> Come on, let's let the kid pick it. Heads or tails? Right. I'm going to go with heads. Calls heads. Ooh. All right. Oh! Heads it is. Team Ruka, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you want to do? Do you want to take that first wave? Are you taking priority or are you going to give it up? Yeah, you got to close out. Let's go surfing first. All right, Ruka is taking the first priority. They're taking a chance here. That wave could be real high quality. Could be sketchy. Yeah, but we the can other? hit the clothes out, ride the whitewash, and keep surfing. That, that could happen. Mean we got to kick out, right? That's true. Yeah. yeah, it happens. All right, let's mount up. <laughs> I'm sure if you slap the clothes out, it's going to be a pretty good score. <laughs> I think like it was halfway down the river from where we started. This one wave broke like off the, the wall and it was like a perfect left. Like it was like in the ocean. It was like it just turned and turned it was so far. I was like smiling the whole way. It's nuts. It was, so, it was like kind of big at first. I was like tripping. I was like, oh, yeah. hopefully we make it to the finals. That's all I can say. <laughs> so, so much fun. Like, the first day it was uh, pretty small and. You know, you didn't have that much opportunity to surf, and today it was massive and almost too big, I guess. It's like half the river was almost a close out and just white water, so it um, feels like, you know, the more time you can get out there, the best spots, you, you know, you work out the best spots and try and make the most of it, but um, no, not a ball, it's great fun. After a couple long days of competition, the teams decided to see what China had to offer. After dinner, the teams explored Herfong Jia, 
A street that has everything from exotic foods to arts and crafts. A street that you can get lost in if you're not careful. The final day of competition, the teams woke up to an ominous weather spun off from Typhoon Usagi. Driving rain squalls and 60 knot winds almost sabotaged the event, but a break in the weather allowed the teams just enough time to complete the finals. So it's the uh, morning of the finals here in Hangzhou and I'm about to head out. Um, me and Trent Munro are uh, competing against um, Michael Rockman and Clarny David, so it should be a fun day out there. There's a bit of wind around and it's kind of rainy, so hopefully we can, um, by the time we get up there, the wind disappears and the wave comes through and yeah, we both have a bit of fun down the river. The weather, looks like the silver dragon is here today. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. You know, no pressure, just go out and have fun and and see what opportunities are out there and you know get mapper into a couple of lives and yeah have fun We knew the left-hander in the inside kind of wedged up and I was able to have like a steep section out there and there's a bit of wash off the top so I was able just to kick the fins out a couple of times on the top of the wave but it's kind of sketchy because there's so much water moving off the lip out there you can't kind of blast off it but I think I did end up doing a couple of blasts that were um, okay for river surfing but my legs were just killing they were just like burning I just at the end I just had to flick off when my legs were just too small. <laughs> I did this one where I came back to like, do it, like cut back and come up and hit it. My like my fins came out and I just threw my tail and like I almost got caught behind and somehow like my board just like kind of like Ew. went right back on the way. <laughs> a hard-fought back-and-forth battle between teams Ruka and Ocean and Earth, Team Ruka emerged victorious, claiming $10,000 for the win and the title of this year's Red Bull Chiantong Shootout Champions. The night after the competition ended, the teams were greeted to a performance from Kid Mac and an opportunity to let loose and enjoy their last night in China.
light wore on and after many drinks, a dance-off erupted with the boys and girls showing us their best moves. will not soon forget.